Alright guys, so for today's video, um, so the day before this, this is being recorded on November 8th, Sunday, November 8th, 2020. Uh, the day before this, so yesterday, November 7th, I uh, tried to go fishing, but it, it, it just rained a lot. And now, overnight, it's snowing, and it's snowing pretty good. So, I don't necessarily want to go out in the snow and fish right now. Uh, if the snow lets up for a minute, maybe. I don't like snow. Uh, I know a lot of people do, but I don't. Um, so today, I'm going I'm going to go over my rod and reel arsenal and all my tackle. So uh, let's get right into it. So let's begin with my rods and reels. The most prominent rod that you guys have seen on my channel this year is this fella right here. This uh, this uh, six foot six eagle claw spinning rod. It doesn't have a name, surprisingly. It's got a bunch of letters and numbers on it, but I think that's just like the item code or something. But just an eagle claw spinning rod, six foot six medium action. Uh, it works great for trout fishing in lakes. It's got it's got length, so I can cast stuff, but it's also got sensitivity there as well. Um, I also use it for finesse bass fishing. Um, not exactly the best, but you know it does the job. But when it comes to putting action on like little finesse soft plastics, not always the greatest, but it, it does the job. It gets the job done. And then the reel that I have on this is uh, a real spinning reel taken off an ugly stick GX2, and uh, this reel is one of the very few things that I have. That actually holds sentimental value. I've caught my personal best on every single species I've caught on this reel. Um, my personal best rainbow trout, personal best brown trout, personal best largemouth bass, personal best yellow perch. So I've got a lot of history with this reel and it, it still works. It makes some squeaking nowadays but it, it, it does the job. It still works. So that's, that's, this is probably the combo that you've seen most on my channel. Um, moving on to my other spinning rod. This is uh, the 5 foot 6 light action uh, ugly stick light pro. Um, extremely good uh, trout fishing rod for streams. Um, you guys have seen me use this rod in streams all the time and paired up with it I have this uh, Granite Outdoors 2000 reel and uh, I believe it's now sold by Ozark Trail sold as part of the Walmart brand but it's 15 bucks at Walmart and it works like a charm uh, I've had this for two or three years now and I've been super pleased with it it's got it got a decent gear ratio five I think it's a five to one gear ratio so, not the fastest reel ever, but when you're trout fishing, you don't always need to, you know, be cranking in and winding in lures and stuff. It's normally just slow and steady presentations, and this reel is perfect for that. And then this rod, again, just does a great job for those short, accurate casts that I need to make. Um, that basically does it for this combo. And then my final combo, I only have three rods. I, I, I don't really feel like I need any more because I've got my light rod, my medium rod, and then I have sort of my heavier rod, uh, my bait casting rod. And uh, sounds like they're firing up uh, some sort of snow because uh, it's snowing pretty good. Normally it doesn't snow this much where I live. Sometimes it does. And they've got like snow plows and stuff, so we're good. But this is my bait casting rod. Uh, it's the Lose American Hero bait casting combo. And uh, it, I, I like this thing. The reel, um, mostly plastic, but it works. It does a good job. Doesn't make the coolest sounds ever, but it, it, it does the job. Um, seven foot medium heavy rod. So it's got some backbone to it, but it's also got a little sensitivity. So when I'm working lures, I can detect bites. 
And uh, funny story, I actually got this three years ago. Um, I got this, uh, this is three years ago I started watching fishing videos on YouTube and the most popular category by far in the fishing YouTube community is bass fishing and you know, a lot of people do it around the country. And so I really wanted a bait caster for Christmas and I got one and I actually didn't use it that much until this year. Uh, I'd used it a few times, didn't catch any fish on it. Uh, last fall, not not this fall, fall 2019, I, I caught my personal best bass on it, a uh, two pounder I believe on a power bait swim bait. And then this year I, uh, I caught my personal best bass of two and a half pounds on this spinning rod here. So rod doesn't really matter always like you can you can handle big fish on any rod as long as you have the patience to do so but this thing is really good for making accurate casts into heavy cover this is what i use it for i use it for jigs for creature baits for just texas rigs anytime i need to cast make really short accurate casts into heavy cover this is my rod uh, just got 12 pound monofilament on there, uh, Zebco, whatever monofilament line. But this this is what I use as like my main bass fishing reel. And then I'll throw top waters on this just because I want that heavier rod to be able to set that hook when that fish hits. And uh, I think that about does it for this one. Uh, I've used it a lot more this year. I actually had the settings all wrong on it until this year and then I fixed the settings so that helped a lot getting all the settings right for me. Um, I usually, I, I used to have it completely on max breaks so I wasn't able to cast it anywhere. And so now I've got the brake settings all good, spool tension, drag, all that stuff and uh, now it's one of my, one of the favorite rods, one of my favorite rods that I've ever owned. But that just about does it for my rods and reels. Um, now for my tackle, we've got quite a lot here. So there go my rods. <laughs> They're gonna slide around. So this is my tackle backpack. I love this backpack, okay? I'm not sponsored by anybody because I've got like 28 subscribers, but this backpack is great. So if we open up, so this tiny top pocket here is a sunglasses holder. I don't really use it that much because usually the sunglasses are on my eyes. But if we open this up here, we got this top pocket just has a ton of storage space. I've got first aid kit, a fly box, and just all kinds of little trout and panfish soft plastics here. I've got these little imitation salmon eggs and I've got like little jigs and just all kinds of little goodies in here. I've uh, got these little, I've got soft plastics everywhere, but little trout and panfish soft plastics, uh, little crappie grubs, just, just all that cool stuff. So we're going to close up this top pocket here. In the side pockets, I usually just keep uh, line, like spare line, leader, all that type of stuff in these side pockets here, and that's what I've got in there. Uh, I do keep a pocket knife in my backpack just in case I need to, like, um, let's say my nail clippers break or something like that. I've got something to cut the line. Uh, or if I need to clean a fish in the field, I've got that pocket knife as well. Um, but, um... This, this center pocket here also holds just spare line leaders, but the kicker comes with the main bottom pocket. We open this up, just all kinds of storage in these four boxes here, and they're interchangeable, so I can, I can put different stuff in there for my different fishing needs. Um, so, right here is my terminal tackle box. I've just got, got a few jigs in here, but just your average, you know, Sinkers, hooks, and swivels. That's that's the bulk of what's in here. Um, got a couple tubes. Looks like in here a bobber. 
Um, but yeah, just terminal tackle, anything I need when fishing for any species. Moving on to the next box. This is uh, two boxes that I keep permanently in this backpack. That's the terminal tackle box and the box of inline spinners. And inline spinners, in my opinion, are the most versatile fishing lure of all time. And that is because I've caught trout on spinners, multiple species of trout, bass, perch, and uh, you can catch crappie on spinners. If you've got big enough bluegill, bluegill will hit spinners. They're, they're just, in my opinion, the, boat, the most versatile fishing lure of all time. So I've got quite a variety here. It's not really organized because I try to organize it every once in a while, but it just ends up not being organized. It ends up coming unorganized. So I've got Panther Martin spinners, uh, just all kinds of uh, maps spinners like this one here. This is one of my favorite patterns. Rooster tails, blue fox, you name it, I've got it. Joe's flies, just all kinds of stuff. I've got some Jake's lures in here. If you've never heard of Jake's lures, I've barely heard of them. I don't really use them much. They're like big spoons, I think. I think they'd be good for like salmon and steelhead fishing or like trolling, uh, but I don't really do much of either. But that's what Jake's lure looks like. I've caught a couple hooks off of it because I thought I was going to use it on a single barbless hook area. No, I dropped that one. But yeah, that's what a Jake's lure looks like. Just kind of a big spoon, I guess. Good sharp hooks on them. And then, right now I've got this backpack set up for trout fishing. And my, my favorite... One of the most underrated trout fishing lures of all time, but it works so well, is Rapala's. Like Rapala mini jerk baits. I, I just I just cast them out, reel them in like crankbaits, but they make excellent jerk baits as well. Uh, I've got them in rainbow trout and silver colors in here. I've got a little red one as well, and a couple I've got a couple uh, rebel crit poppers in here. Um, but look at this, I mean, the rainbow patterns actually work really good for brown trout and vice versa. Brown trout patterns work good for rainbow trout. Um, so this is my rainbow trout and silver Rapala box. And then this one is my brown trout and gold Rapala box. And uh, we got a couple brook trout ones in here as well. These brown trout ones work good for rainbow trout. They also work good for brown trout because brown trout are very cannibalistic. They will eat younger brown trout. I've seen it before. But these are, these are in my opinion, the most underrated trout lure of all time. And you see in my videos that I use these and I have good success with them and trout just love them. I caught, it, I'll, I'll leave a link to this video up in the cards, but I caught um, I've caught all kinds of rainbows on these lures, but I also caught a cut bow uh, on this, on these lures, and uh, a brook trout on a brown trout lure. So that that's pretty universal in my opinion. You got three trout species there on just one lure. Oh, and I've also caught you know brown trout on these, but way before my this channel existed. Um, but yeah, that's, that's basically my trout fishing stuff. The only other thing I have for trout fishing stuff, um, that's all I had in the backpack. The other trout fishing item I have is this ammo box, which is full of, uh, not ammo, well, sort of. It, it's filled with trout ammo, so I've, I've got all kinds of power bait in here. I used to have salmon eggs in here, but I ran out. Uh, I've got salmon egg power bait. Just all kinds of stuff. And just every color you can imagine I've got in here. But that does it for all my trout fishing stuff. I've also got bite bells in here. You guys have seen that once or twice before. They're, I, I don't use them much. I don't really fish with bait much anymore. I've, I've taken up artificial lure fishing as one of my favorite forms of fishing. Um, moving, moving right along, 
to my bass fishing tackle box. Now this, um, this is just a little one tray tackle box and it's got a lot of bass fishing stuff in here. Now, it's not very organized, but if it were, this top compartment here, this one tray, um, it would contain just all my hooks and weights, all the terminal tackle I need, jig heads, it uh, looks like I've got some tiny underspins in there, um, but I've just got various spinner baits, inline spinners, uh, got a jig in here, but below the tray, I've got all my soft plastic, so let me take some out, the, I, the, the key ones that I've used this year. So we got that one, that one, and uh, this one. So this year, you know, you guys you guys know this, I've, I subscribed to Mr. Tackle Box, and I, I've been impressed with uh, what uh, they've given me. And so one of my favorite things that they've given me this year, multiple times, is beaver baits like craw beaver style baits like this one um this one in particular the bruiser baits avenger has been an absolute workhorse for me uh, I, I threw it on the back of a shaky head threw it on the back of a jig and all summer long i was able to catch bass at what was normally a pressured pond on this setup right here um the other one i discovered in the late summer was just simple tubes. Uh, these are little Strike King tubes. I caught quite a few fish on those tubes um, in late August, early September, stuff like that. Um, but yeah, just throw it on the back of a little jig head and it, it works. So uh, that's, uh, that's one of the ones I just kind of discovered was a really good thing to do. And then in August, Mystery Tackle Box Slam, I used these uh, little Excite Baits, uh, Raptor Tail Juniors, or whatever they're called, and then these little Big Bite Baits Battle Bugs, and this style of craw, it, it really only worked in August when the fish were kind of chasing, like it, it started to get into that fall transition, and the fish started to chase big food. Um, I really had to finesse them during the summer, like with that craw, I threw it on the back of a little finesse jig and that worked, but like they didn't hit on top water a whole ton, they didn't hit on uh, swim baits or crank baits or anything like that, just basically finesse jigs and then if they were really hungry at a particular time, top water. But I think that about does it for my bass fishing tackle box move on to my other bass fishing boxes so this box here let me open it up so I bought this originally as a yum bass fishing kit came with a few different soft plastics came with some uh, lizards and a few different types of worms but now what I have in there is uh, just all kinds of stuff but top waters jigs and spinner baits are the main categories we've got a little swim bait in here uh, a little Z-Man chatterbait, but I've got a frog, Booyah Pad Crasher, just simple natural colored frog. I haven't, I didn't really throw this much over the summer. I want to throw it more next summer, um, maybe even next spring as we get into the post spawn. But you know, just all kinds of jigs. I got this Guggen Squad jig from uh, October's box. I got this uh, flipping jig from August box. I've got a finesse jig and this in the main tackle box that's supposed to go in here, but it's not in there. It's a finesse jig from Strike King. Um, I've got this little jig and grub thing from Arky. Just kind of this weird double tail grub thing with a skirt. So I'll have to try that. Uh, at some point, and uh, I, I think it'll do well. I'll have to try it at some point. Um, but going into the rest of my top waters, I showed you guys the frog. I haven't used it much. Um, this thing, uh, I, I didn't use the whole ton, but it looks like a puffer fish. I mean, let's be honest, it looks like a puffer fish. Uh, for that reason, my friends and I call it the puffer fish because, uh, I mean, it looks like one. It's called the Arbogast Buzz Plug. Um, 
I think it'll work um, next summer. I hope it does. Uh, I should have thrown a little more, but I, I was really into the jig mode last summer, and I wanted to continue that pattern. Um, another thing I've got from Arbogast, if I can unhook it from this. Another thing that I've got from Arbogast is the hula popper, which kind of looks like a frog, um, but it's a open hook popper. And I, I, I threw this a little bit, uh, but no bites. But I think that next year, in the early summer, this thing will be fire. I think it'll catch a lot of fish. Um, and same goes for this walking bait. Now, I've never, ever thrown a walking bait, but I want to get into that next summer. Um, and then I've got a couple buzz baits here, a couple Walmart spinner baits. I've got a purple and grayish one, and I've got a, a white and blue one. Um, but yeah, that, that, that really does it right there. Oh, and I've also got this little tail spin that I've got, that I got in a uh, mystery tackle box trout box when I was a little bit younger. Uh, I haven't used it much yet. It's just super heavy. And so I want to throw it where it's not going to get snagged. So I think, I think this would be a super good mover for trolling in a big lake in a super, you know, big, deep lake. I think this would do really well, but I just haven't used it that much yet. Um, but that does it for this box. And the last bass fishing box I have is my crankbait box. I've just got all kinds of crankbaits in here. Um, so the first crankbait I ever received was this lipless crankbait from my grandpa. And uh, he, uses, he uses stuff like this to troll for walleye and wiper in lakes near him. Um, and I've got I've got one that looks just like that one. I've also got this one, and then he's also given me like this little uh, cotton cordell thing, super spot. Um, he's given me this uh, Rapala lipless crankbait, um, but yeah, he's given me quite a bunch of stuff over the years. Um, this lipless actually caught me my second bass on the entire year. This came in an Eagle Claw bass fishing tackle kit. Um, it's actually a pretty decent little crankbait. It's, the paint is kind of starting to wear off, but caught caught me my second bass of the entire year, so can't really complain. I've got a couple square bills that I haven't really thrown around, um, so this is one of them. Came in October's box. Um, and then this one, let's see, let's see if I can get it out, I'll just show you. So this one I got in, uh, May's Mystery Tackle Box, the first Mystery Tackle Box video I ever did. I, I threw it, I threw it once in May, didn't catch anything, and then in August, when I went to the private pond for the first time, I threw this around and I got it snagged and it broke off and I was kind of I was kind of confused to like why it broke off but about a month later uh, me and my buddies met up for a fishing trip and my buddy uh, reaches into his tackle box pulls out this crankbait and asks if it's mine because he had caught it at the private pond a month later after I'd lost it and uh, so kind of cool that I got this back uh, it's a little rusted but uh, if I change the hooks out, I think it'll be just fine. So that was that was really cool, and I'm and I'm glad I got that crankbait back. Got a couple other crankbaits in here. And I've got this uh, little jerk bait. Um, I I get my got it from my grandpa, and I think it'll be good in the winter. I don't know though, because it's it's really flashy. It's got a crazy color on it, but. I have to give it a toss and see what happens. Um, but that does it for my bass fishing stuff. Uh, the other things I'd like to talk about for my uh, tr uh, this is my single barbless trout fishing kit. So uh, for those of you who don't know, in the West, 
um, there are some trout streams where you can only use one singular barbless hook. And that's just for the good of the trout, good, of, good for conservation, all that stuff. So I don't mind uh, converting a few lures to do so. And you guys saw this in my trout fishing a tiny mountain stream video. Or no, trout fishing in a tiny mountain town. That, that was it. But I just used a lot of these single barbless uh, lures. And I actually did not see another single person with a spinning rod up there during the entire three, four day trip. And so I was kind of confused by that. There were a lot of fly fishermen up there who were fly fishing for trout. And uh, I have a friend that apparently did good up there that same weekend. Um, but I caught, I was able to catch a total of seven trout on conventional lures because I, I don't think those trout had seen conventional tackle before or if they did it was a very rare occurrence so that was that was pretty cool and uh, I'll leave a link to that video up in the cards if I haven't already um, yeah but a great time so I've got some I've got a few flies in here uh, some bubbles swivels all, all the stuff we need files to convert lures um, but that's about it. I, I don't use, ever since that trip, I haven't really used this tackle kit. Um, I, I generally like to fish with treble hooks, but to get to, to get good trout fishing, sometimes you have to do the single barbless. Um, and the last item I want to talk about uh, is my catfish tackle kit. Now, as you can see, there's quite a bit missing from this tackle kit. And that's because I, early this summer in June, I tried to do some fishing for catfish, but I didn't catch any. I had two bites, and both of those bites took my both my circle hooks. Um, one bite, uh, one bite, I just dropped the bait, and then as I was reeling in, I got snagged, and then I lost the hook. But the other time. Uh, I was sitting on the dock and all of a sudden my rod started jumping so I ran over to it and I tried to set the hook and I was reeling in and I thought maybe the fish had dropped the bait but no the hook was just completely gone and I tie pretty decent knots too so uh, that fish must have been I don't know three four pounds not bad for a channel catfish um, but it's got skinning pliers in here hook fish unhooker which I don't really use I just use pliers uh, it's got like a leader and swivel in here, hooks, sinkers, swivels, uh, beads, anything you might need for catfishing. But uh, I hope to use this more uh, pretty soon, like next spring, next summer. And then that really does it. So there it is, guys, my rod and reel arsenal and all my tackle that I have. And uh, if you guys would like to see another one of these next year, uh, please leave a like, and uh, if you'd like to see more videos like this one, please be sure to subscribe, and uh, see you guys in the next video.